In our last video, we established the polar form of conics via the geometric definition as depicted here. And we found that the polar form is given by the equation R is equal to the eccentricity times D, where D is the horizontal distance from the directrix to the focus, over 1 plus the eccentricity by cosine of theta. So R is the radial coordinate and theta is the polar angle. Now you may have also seen the equation written as L divided by 1 plus E cos theta. So we've simply replaced ED with L. And this is because L is what we call the semi-latus rectum. Now the latus rectum, it has nothing to do with the end of the digestive system or the gastrointestinal tract or any other part of human anatomy for that matter. And I apologize, and I apologize for being facetious. Latus rectum is Latin, latus meaning side, rectum meaning straight. So literally side straight. And what it is, it's a chord that connects two points of the curve formed by P and is parallel to the directrix and it runs through the focal point. So basically it's a straight line that runs through the focal point from one side of the section to the other and again it's parallel to the directrix. So the semi-latus rectum is half of that. Okay, so L denotes the distance of this blue line. So let's discuss some variations of this polar form. One of them is that you may see instead of a positive here that we can have a negative as well. So the denominator can either be written as 1 plus e cos theta or 1 minus e cos theta. And how this is possible is that if we just take the mirror image of this diagram here and we put the focus on the right hand side of the directrix and the curve formed by point P is the exact opposite as well, then this geometry will give us the negative sign. Now another variation is that the equation can be written as L on 1 plus or minus E and instead of being cos theta we have sine theta instead. And this happens when we take this geometry and we rotate it by 90 degrees. So if we still have the focal point at the pole and the polar axis still being horizontal. This time the directrix is parallel to the polar axis, so the directrix is horizontal as well, and the locus of point P is oriented in this fashion. So sine theta simply occurs as a result of the conjugate definition of conic sections. And by the same token, we get a negative sign when we have the focus above the directrix. So now you should recognize that when you see an equation like this, or like this, that you are dealing with conics in their polar form. Uh, we might leave this video here and make it a relatively short video, and we'll tackle some example problems in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like this video if you found it useful. And please share it with your fellow students. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the comment section below. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.